Bonjour à tous. Today, Ontario released their highest number of daily COVID-19 cases ever. This week, Alberta saw their biggest cases ever, too. People on the East Coast are facing new travel, new cases and travel restrictions. And across the country, hundreds more families are grieving the loss of someone they loved. We're in some of the toughest days of this pandemic. Winter is coming. We're being driven indoors. Uh, we can't sit on patios and terraces like we used to. Um, we're going to have to hold on tight. We're going to have to be there for each other by keeping our distances from each other. Avoid gatherings, follow local public health rules, and know that we're going to get through this winter. Vaccines are on the horizon. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. But we need to do what we can right now to make it through these coming months. Hier soir, j'ai tenu ma 22e réunion virtuelle avec les premiers ministres des provinces et des territoires pour discuter des efforts communs que nous déployons. Pendant notre rencontre, on a parlé de notre réponse à la COVID-19 et notamment des mesures qu'on prend pour soutenir les entreprises et les gens qui font face à des fermetures ciblées, ainsi que du soutien aux communautés durement touchées et notre plan de vaccination. Je vais d'abord vous parler de notre réponse à la COVID-19. Notre gouvernement a déjà fourni plus de 25 milliards de dollars aux provinces et aux territoires, notamment pour les aider à améliorer la ventilation dans les écoles et à se procurer de l'équipement de protection individuelle. We've shipped hundreds of millions of pieces of PPE, over 5.2 million rapid tests, with more to come, and invested over $25 billion to help the provinces and territories fight COVID-19. We expect that this support gets to people and communities, because that's who it's for. And that's where it makes a difference. Just look at what federal funding through the Safe Restart Agreement has meant to folks in Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. The city used part of their funding to help business owners who were having troubles with property costs. It made a big difference for local employers and their employees during a really difficult time. Businesses, cities, and provincial governments are facing tough choices about public health measures. Our government is here to help. In fact, this is something the Premiers and I discussed during our First Minister's meeting yesterday. Already, our government has provided additional targeted support to communities facing significant outbreaks, and we're ready to do more as needed. As I discussed with Premier Savikatak earlier this week, our government is providing over $19.3 million in additional emergency support for Nunavut. This will go towards everything from more PPE and healthcare staff to getting healthy food on people's plates. Enfin, les premiers ministres et moi avons parlé de la vaccination. Ensemble, le gouvernement fédéral, les provinces et les territoires travaillent là-dessus depuis le mois de mai. On sait qu'on doit établir un plan concerté si on veut offrir un vaccin sûr et efficace aux Canadiens le plus vite possible. Étant donné qu'on reçoit de plus en plus de nouvelles prometteuses au sujet des candidats vaccins, on accélère ce travail. Pendant notre rencontre, le ministre Leblanc a donné plus de détails sur notre plan pour y arriver. Comme nos experts l'ont expliqué hier, on s'attend à obtenir des millions de doses de vaccins contre la COVID-19 au début de l'année prochaine, avec des doses pour tous les Canadiens au courant de l'année. On va travailler avec les provinces et les territoires et avec les communautés autochtones pour déterminer comment on va distribuer ces doses. Et on va s'assurer de suivre les conseils des experts de nos différents groupes consultatifs qui sont composés des meilleurs scientifiques en la matière au pays. Toutes nos décisions sont guidées par les recommandations des meilleurs experts et scientifiques. Canada is well prepared for large-scale rollouts of vaccines, but this will be the biggest immunization in the history of the country. We must reach everyone who wants a vaccine, no matter where they live. Right now, we're working closely with the provinces and territories, as well as Indigenous communities, to ensure readiness to receive and distribute these vaccines. To assist in this process, 
we are standing up a national operations centre through the Public Health Agency of Canada with the support of the Canadian Armed Forces to coordinate logistics and distribution of vaccines. Major General Danny Fortin will be heading up the logistics and operations within this centre. Major General Fortin is a seasoned officer, the Chief of Staff of Canadian Joint Operations Command and served as, NATO, as commander of NATO mission in Iraq. The Canadian Armed Forces will assist on planning, including to meet challenges like cold storage requirements, data sharing and reaching Indigenous and rural communities. For our part, the federal government has already purchased freezers to work for specific vaccine candidates. This will be a major effort, but together Canada can and will do this. In our meeting, the Premier spoke about the need to work in partnership with the federal government. They also brought up the fact that in certain cases they will need support to ensure that everyone is reached, including vulnerable people and Indigenous people. When a vaccine is ready, Canada will be ready. We're in this together, and the more we work as a team, the better we'll do. So to everyone, to all Canadians, continue to wear a mask, keep your distance, and wash your hands. Avoid large gatherings. And don't forget about one of the easiest ways to join the Team Canada effort by downloading the COVID Alert app. Over five and a half million people are now using the app. And just yesterday, the Northwest Territories was the latest to bring COVID Alert fully on board. No matter where you live, even if you're in the North or the Atlantic where cases are fairly low, download COVID Alert. This is literally a tool in your pocket to fight this virus. Aux jeunes, si vous ne l'avez pas déjà fait, téléchargez l'application Alerte COVID sur votre téléphone. Et si vos parents ou grands-parents ont de la difficulté à la télécharger, donnez-leur un coup de main comme vous les aidez souvent à, à, à monter le son à, sur leur Zoom. On peut tous contribuer à assurer la sécurité des gens qui nous entourent. For young people across the country, I have a teenager and a preteen at home, and I can tell you they're always on their devices. Young people need to download the COVID Alert app. It's a way of helping your parents, your grandparents. It's a way of making sure that you're doing your part, hassle-free, to protect yourself and your community from COVID-19. It'll take a second to download. It's free. It protects your privacy, and it helps concretely in combating this virus. So please, do your part. Download the app and help your parents and grandparents download it as well. We're over 25% uptake in terms of available smartphones, but we can do even better than that. As we look towards the coming months, we need to use all the tools we have, and COVID Alert is yet another tool in our toolbox. This morning, I also want to speak about something else we're doing to keep people safe and set everyone up for success. This coming January will mark a year since Bill C-92 came into effect to affirm the rights of First Nation, Inuit and Métis Nation communities to exercise jurisdiction over their children and families. This co-developed legislation is about putting kids first, having fewer children in care and reuniting more families. To do that, Indigenous communities must be in the driver's seat. Since January, we've worked with partners to move forward on the reforms needed to child and family services. And today, we're taking the next step in this process. Our government is investing $542 million to Indigenous communities to exercise full jurisdiction over child and family services. This is vital to moving forward on our promise to address the unacceptable injustices that too many kids and families have faced in the care system. Aujourd'hui, je peux annoncer que notre gouvernement va investir 542 millions de dollars dans les communautés autochtones pour les aider à exercer leur pleine compétence sur les services à l'enfance et à la famille. Cet investissement s'ajoute aux plus de 3 milliards de dollars que nous avons déjà investis pour offrir un financement prévisible, souple et à long terme, visant à assurer la livraison et la modernisation des services à l'enfance et à la famille. 
notre gouvernement continuera de travailler en partenariat avec les communautés autochtones afin de combler les lacunes existantes et d'avancer sur le chemin de la réconciliation. Pour conclure, je tiens à souligner que nous sommes maintenant à moins d'un mois de la période des fêtes. Je sais que décembre sera difficile pour bien des gens, mais n'oubliez pas que la situation actuelle n'est pas permanente. Il y a une lumière au bout du tunnel. Et d'ici là, nous devons tenir le coup un peu plus longtemps. Les gens qui travaillent dans les hôpitaux, les établissements de soins de longue durée, les écoles et les épiceries ont besoin de notre aide pour assurer leur sécurité. Leurs familles comptent sur nous pour les aider à assurer la sécurité de leur mère, de leurs frères, de leurs filles. Alors, suivez les directives locales de santé publique, portez le masque, lavez-vous les mains, gardez-vous les distances et évitez les rassemblements. Téléchargez l'application Alerte COVID et n'oubliez pas que vous n'êtes pas seul. Whether you're a parent or a business owner, you don't have to face this crisis alone. If you need support while you look for work, we've introduced the Canada Recovery Benefit and Enhanced EI. If you need to take care of a family member or stay home from work because you're sick, we've created the Canada Recovery Caregiving Benefit and the Canada Recovery Sickness Benefit. If you own a small business, we've launched new support on rent, expanded the Canada Emergency Business Account loans, and extended the wage subsidy. On Monday, we'll be releasing our fall economic statement. We'll have more to say then about what else we're doing to support you through this pandemic and rebuild a strong, resilient economy for everyone. But for now, I want you to know that we're here for you, for today, for tomorrow, for as long as we need to get through this. We have your back. Merci.